right, you want to lose uh, 30 pounds in 90 days. Yeah, I bet. Who doesn't? You uh, want to do it, and you want it to be extremely easy. Of course. I can do this. I can make this happen. I can even show you, but uh, the reality is you know you, and I have a feeling I know you too. But anyway, welcome to Walk Talk Vent. Let's do this. All right, guys. Um, we're going to fast forward a year now. If you remember in the last video that uh, we shared together, chronically, Stephanie was having some issues with her teeth, and she actually went ahead and told us about multiple root canals that she had had uh, from dry mouth and I assume some dry sockets and situations. We're going to get an update on that from her right now. So I will be quiet and let's hear what she has to say. I just wanted to give you an update. It's been a while since I have made a video. Um, so I think the last time I talked to you guys, I was having some issues with my teeth. Well, I went through um, lots of crowns, lots of fillings, lots of root canals. Um, and then I got rechecked yesterday and I found out that my teeth are still decaying at an alarming rate due to the acid reflux and the chronic severe dry mouth. Um, apparently, it's just not enough saliva to wash away the acid, so the acid is eating my teeth. Um, so instead of doing more root canals and more crowns and fillings, they suggest that I get my all of my upper teeth pulled and um, getting an implant called an all on four implant, which is basically like dentures that are affixed to your jaw with screws. You know, every time I think I'm getting better um, with having these problems with, with the gastric bypass, you know, it seems to kind of keep getting worse. I mean, I'm 37 and I have to get um, false teeth. So um, I'm having a hard time, I'm having a hard time digesting that and kind of processing that. I'm really attached to my teeth. I like my teeth and um, it's scary and I'm sad. And I didn't mention it costs about $23,000, which. Holy moly, guys, $23,000. That'll buy you half of a new car nowadays. My goodness gracious. I feel so bad for her. But right there is a clue, ladies and gentlemen. If you've just gotten a surgery, if you're taking Ozempic and Wagovi, and you constantly get the acid reflux, when you're sleeping and don't really notice it, it is literally eating the back of your rear molars. And once tooth decay sets in, it is contagious. That's why people with bad cavities have tons of bad cavities, whereas some people that have no cavities, every tooth is immaculate. That's why it's all or nothing in the tooth game. Anyway, let's hear what she has to say. I don't have um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do to be honest I do believe that you know the universe is always taking care of me and and so I put trust in that but right now it's not really clear how this is going to get done I know that I will be okay um, I guess it just is what it is um, but I just wanted to give you guys an update. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm up to about 156. I have put on some weight. I think it's due to going on birth control and um, probably not eating this the way I should. <sighs> I'm not too worried about that right now, though. Um, I, I do need to eat better. I'm not eating terribly, I think I'm just eating too much, or what I'm eating is uh, has too many calories. 
Anyways, um, otherwise, my stomach is okay. I still get nauseous after I eat about 90% of the time. Um, so I guess that's not great. Um, but I'm not throwing up, which I guess is one thing to be grateful for. Ooh, I'm trying to think of what else. I think that's about it. Um, I really hate having to uh, make videos because every time I make a video, it's an update and something going wrong. So I know you guys hate when I stop the videos, but what she said there is so true. She wanted to do the best, right? She wanted to run marathons. She wanted to get a trainer and work out. She wanted to really be the best person she could be for her husband, Mark, right? And some people, it's just the harder you try, the harder it gets. It's like you're paddling in a boat with a hole in it, right? So I really feel for her because sometimes you seems, it seems like you're damned if you do and damned if you don't in this world. So Stephanie, I'm so sorry that uh, the situation happened, but once again, you're sharing it with everybody and there's something kind of cool about that. Sometimes I wonder how much more I can take or what else is going to go wrong. I'll be honest, I don't see myself living, you know, until I'm 80. I don't. I, I just think there's only so much... You know, a body can handle before it just stops working. And I'm not afraid to die. I'm just sad because I feel like it's gonna come sooner than later. And that makes me sad for my girls. It makes me sad. And I don't think I'll be around to see everything. <laughs> My life was better at 250 pounds than it is today. Her life was better at 250 pounds than it is today. Did you notice that all through every surgery and every situation she was going through, she always said how much weight she lost. She kept positive about this nonstop. But I still can't get over that she lost 25 pounds on her own before this surgery. Guys, we can do this right? We can do this. You have to be a one-man army, but I'm here with you. You be here with me. Let's do this. Get your shoes. Let's go for a walk. Okay. We had 90 days to lose 30 pounds, and that was 10 days ago. No problem. We've got this. If you're new to this channel, we walk daily, we drink water obsessively, and we avoid sugar like the plague. If you are new to Walk Talk Vent, we're really glad you're here. And if you've been here for a while, we're going midweek of the second week. Let's do this. Guys, we have a saying. I can do this. You can do this. We can do this. Let's do this. So, 
I bought these four uh, toothbrush, like a pack of four toothbrushes from Ross, believe it or not. I don't know why a person would buy toothbrushes in Ross, but that's not really the main part of the story. So out of these four toothbrushes, I've gone through one where I've thrown one away. I'm on my second one. But since I had two in reserve left over, I decided to use the other one for cleaning my shoes. So I, I use it on the soles of my shoes with um, with that foaming cleaner for shoes. I'm sure we've all seen the foaming white cleaner. And uh, your boy brushed his teeth with that toothbrush today. <laughs> Oh my God, it was so gross. And the way I found out was comical. I'm sitting there brushing my teeth, right? While I look down and see my toothbrush. And when when you have that scenario, you're immediately thinking, whose toothbrush do I have in my mouth? Which is gross in and of itself. But then when you know that you've been cleaning, you know, shoes for the last, you know, six months with that toothbrush and it was in my mouth. So I go downstairs and I'm working and uh, I, I brushed my teeth with my regular toothbrush after that immediately and I tried to rinse out. And keep in mind, you're brushing your teeth, so it's not like you're swallowing it, but still I felt like I could taste some sort of cleaner in my mouth and it really was freaking me out. So I called Poison Control Center. I go through the ingredients on the back of the uh, bottle and she proceeded to tell me that I should be okay since it had already been 20 or 30 minutes by the time I, I called her. Um, but yeah, that's about the grossest thing that I've done in a while. Another gross story that I have from my past that some people get a chuckle out of is I had a little chocolate colored mini poodle um, named Hershey, believe it or not. We've talked about the Hershey place. His name was Hershey. And one time this cute little poodle came to me after I got home from work to give me a kiss. And all of a sudden, I realized that he had been eating like the crap of the other dog that we had. And so I got literally like a poop kiss. So two gross stories there for you just to show that we all have humbling experiences. This one that I did here, I hope I don't wake up in the middle of the night wanting to puke or something. I don't know about you guys, but vomiting is just the worst. Nausea? Oh my God. Hey, you guys have been writing me so many inspirational comments that just make me feel great. I just, I just can't tell you guys how much I appreciate every comment. I, uh, I haven't really heard of too many YouTube channels that get as many positive, beautiful comments as I get, especially in their first, you know, handful of days and stuff. That's gotta be something special, right? So. Just want you to know that I appreciate it and I figure the least I can do is stay motivated and make these uh, make these videos. I have a, a, an accumulation of videos um, simply because a week or so before I started, I started. And uh, what happened was, I don't know if you guys remember or if you guys watch the whole videos that I always make, but what happened was I realized that my current computer at the time was just antiquated, needed to be replaced by a laptop, right? Or by something new, and I went with the laptop version. And on top of that, a lot of my uh, film editing was just impossible to do on that old computer. So I get the new computer, now I'm able to do the film editing. When I was doing practice runs, like one of the ones that I put for you guys to watch recently, when I was doing that, I was doing those thinking that, you know, hey, that'll be like my first week. Let's go. Let's do this. But then when I knew that I was being stalled by the fact that I had to wait to get new camera equipment and new this, that, and the other. So what I did was, you know, I just kind of gave myself permission to eat some cookies and some milk and, you know, not quite lose the weight yet. I wanted to save the three of the three rules for you guys. You I, uh put up a video, as you guys, I think, know, or at least my subscribers know, where it was before I officially started, and I interviewed Stacy, who lost 137 pounds, and uh, she had to start losing weight because apparently, according to her, her obesity kind of led to her, her cancer. I didn't know there was a link there. If you're a doctor or somebody in the medical profession, maybe you can discuss the links, you know? 
I think that some of us are just prone by poor health, and it probably does have a big genetic component, you know? But my thinking is everybody that goes through poor health, if they're as healthy as they can be, you know, maybe they can go into those situations a little bit more gracefully, you know? We always hear stories about how people were relatively healthy and then all of a sudden they fell off a cliff. I don't want that to happen to any of y'all. Every time I think the cars and the wind is too noisy, I go home and I find out that, no, you guys were actually able to hear me. So now I know I can kind of walk even on these annoying streets and hopefully still fine tune the audio where it's not too bad. I uh, want you to know that during my video editing, I could very easily you know, do it in 20 or 30 minutes if I wanted to put no special effects or no words on it, but I like doing that. That makes it fun for me. One of the things I really enjoy if you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel is my Epidemic Sound subscription that I got. Um, do I like investing money uh, for something like YouTube where you might not ever get your money back? I don't love it, right? But at the same time, if it's something you enjoy, which a lot of creators do enjoy their channel, I think they just make it sound like they can't stand it, right? If it's something you enjoy, then I think it's worth the hundred bucks a year or whatever it cost me. Same with, uh, with Canva. I use Canva to make my thumbnails. And you know what's interesting? I know people probably aren't crazy about my thumbnail, but if everybody else has their mug on their thumbnail, right? And they put the craziest words and stuff up there, my thinking is I'm gonna put my legs up there and every time you see those legs, you're gonna think, have I seen that one yet? And you're gonna click on it and watch it anyway. Cause I've got the greatest, I've got the greatest subscribers ever. So yeah, I'm just so pumped guys. I feel like I'm on cloud nine. When I was uh, thinking about doing this channel, I was kind of blue, you know? Because you would like to do the channel on robotics or AI or something that's kind of cool, mainstream and trending, right? Walking is, uh, it's kind of antiquated. Nobody does it, you know? And once again, look, there's nobody out here, which makes no sense. The school just got out. Yet, yeah, did you guys notice there's, there's no walkers? That's why our kids are chubby today, guys. When we were kids, do you remember the droves of people that walked? Do you remember Halloween? How every single neighborhood had thousands of kids walking around and almost every home gave out candy. Do you guys remember that? It was better back then. And I think we can get back there. I think we just need to have enough people to say, you know what? We're going old school. That, that's what we need. I also uh, remember Christmas used to be one of those seasons where people would actually put out decorations and lights. Whereas now, what is it guys? Like maybe two out of 10 homes have, have a couple lights up, you know? There's always the ritzy neighborhoods that you could drive to where they really go all out because it's easy to believe in the Lord when you're rich. <laughs> Tell you what, one thing I have that's interesting is I don't have anybody downing us. I think people want to know that people are trying to take control of their health, you know? I think deep down we as humans want to know that other human beings are doing the best that they can and trying. So again, if you guys are joining me, I would love you to join me every single day. You know, I really would. I would love for you to drink nothing but water. I would love for you to say, hey, I haven't had a piece of, a little bit of sugar in weeks, you know? But remember, those things are really, really challenging. And if you are gonna go to a special event, enjoy yourself, you know? I can't tell you how many times through the years I've seen my uh, friends and family members and they'll go to a special occasion and they'll say, no, no, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, on a diet right now, right? 
And then four days later, they're off their diet. And it's like, why didn't you just eat the food that was prepared for the special outing, you know? And although I really believe what I said the other day, that even if you live longer, it's just prolonging the miserable years at the end of your life, it's still worth it. Heck, I'd rather be miserable for a year or two rather than not get the year or two, you know? Knock on wood. That's probably bad luck to say, but I I think the good Lord knows what I mean by it, and I hope you guys do too. I want to live as long as I can, you know? Um, for some of you, you might not know that when I'm doing this type of experimentation or challenge, whatever you want to call it, I really do try to eat decent foods. But if you think about almost every meal that you can have, just by avoiding the drink, you know, the soda portion of it or the beer portion of it and drinking water, you make every meal that much better. When you're going out to fast food, you know what you could do that make it easy without affecting the taste at all? You could simply take off the top bun and to throw it in the trash. Hey guys, how are you? I've done that so many times. As a matter of fact, when I was doing the Atkins diet with my wife, that's how we like eased into Atkins. It was like, hey, how about if we just have one of the buns here on this burger, you know? So there are little moves you can make. One of the best moves you can make is as a couple, if you're doing this with me, you know, a, a, a husband and wife team or something like that, you know, what you could always do is you could always say, hey, for the next 90 days, let's just split meals. We'll get a large combo meal, but we'll split it. And instead of the drink, maybe we'll get a Powerade. Now, if you normally get a Powerade, try to go to water. But if you're normally with a soda, you know, maybe go for a Powerade. I really believe in the step down method, right? Same with you cigarette smokers and you uh, drinkers that aren't full blown alcoholics, but want to get, you know, to the point where you're drinking less. Wean that baby down. You have three beers at the end of the night. Sure, you deserve it. You work hard, right? Why can't you cut it to two beers? And then in two or three weeks, you cut it to one beer. Remember, everything that you eat consistently, you know, your regular diet over the course of a week, all of that is what makes you, you. If you're consistently 300 pounds, all the food that you eat, your four meals a day, your six Coca-Colas, your five snacks, your little fruit snacks right before you go to bed, all of those combined are what make you. So if we avoid the sodas, even half of them, you're gonna slowly but surely start to see a notice. The problem is I want us to baby step more and more. So if your thinking is, I'm going to go from three sodas to two, and then I'm just going to stay there forever, then that's wonderful. But you need to adjust your goal from 30 pounds in 90 days to maybe 15 pounds over the course of the year. And I'm serious about that. There's not many people that have the ability to lose weight while they just maintain doing what they always do anyway, right? So you have to really decide... Is this something that I'm willing to at least try for 90 days? Because even though I say that this is the easiest, most down to earth diet and exercise plan you can have, because I firmly believe it is, it still does require a little effort. Okay, but remember, baby steps can lead to explosive changes, okay? So don't belittle yourself if you are going from three to two sodas a night that's huge, okay? Especially when you consider that one walk is gonna eliminate the second soda, okay? And another walk is gonna eliminate the third. Now again, there's doctors and surgeons out there that'll say, hey, it might be eliminating the caloric intake, but it's not eliminating all the damage that it can be doing with regards to you know how sugar affects your system. I believe, and don't quote me on this, but I believe sugar is inflammatory. So I believe that after a while, if you can relieve your body of the sugar, I believe things like inflammation will become less of a problem for you. Um, another thing that, that I always notice when I quit eating sugar is that your morning breath and the film on your teeth in the morning 
uh, becomes kind of non-existent. And no, this is not giving you permission not to brush your teeth, but don't brush your teeth with the same brush you use on your shoes. It's very disgusting. I almost wanted to vomit for an hour just thinking about it. So <laughs> if you've ever had any embarrassing stuff like that before, share it. I would love to hear it. And if it's really funny and you say it in the right way, I'll see if I can share it with our listeners if you're okay with it. Okay. I, uh, have a couple of people that reach out to me on the daily and they say, Hey, I really enjoyed my walk with you. Well, I really enjoy walking knowing that you're here with me. You know, I think it makes talking a little bit easier. I honestly thought that I would be talking by myself for at least a year or so to already have north of a hundred subscribers is just wonderful. Very, very wonderful. By the way, if you ever visit my channel or look at my videos, you might notice that I have a couple stories on there from about a decade ago. So while chronically Stephanie was going through her trials and tribulations, your boy was just trying to write a couple short stories and a novel. But I did those short stories and novels for kind of a weird reason, kind of a wrong reason, but it was a necessary thing. I was having a hard time completing stuff. And to be honest with you guys, I think a lot of you guys deal with that same problem. And I think this channel can prove it. A lot of you guys have been saying, I'm doing a walking routine for the past five weeks. I'm in week six now. Hey, I, I want to get back into walking. These are all the words of people that have quit stuff before. It is so easy to quit, guys. And imagine if a week ago, instead of starting this with me, imagine you would have went to one of those high-end uh, gyms and spent $25 or $35 a month in this commitment that you have now for the next year, you know? If you can't walk and drink water and at least try to slow down a little on the sugar, then you're probably doomed to fail with the membership, you know? So anyway, I started off by writing a couple of short stories that I published on Amazon. They are not edited the best. So if you're a teacher and you go read them, please don't be mad at me for the poor editing. You got to understand, I was at a point in my life where I just felt like I wasn't finishing things. You know, oh, I want to do a hundred push-ups a day. Well, a hundred push-ups a day became 25, became 10, became none. You know, have you ever, you ever been there? I want to uh, save, I want to save a thousand bucks over the next month. Well, what that ended up being was me not saving a thousand bucks over the next month, you know? And when you have a lot of failures like that and things and tasks that you're not completing, I'm one of those guys that my brain thinks a little different and I'm like, hey, I want to prove that I can do something. So I started working on these little short stories and then I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I can make the short stories connect to one another because I'm a Seinfeld fan. And if you like Seinfeld as much as I do, you love how the three different stories of George, Elaine and, and Jerry kind of all converge at the end, right? God, that was such a great show. If you love Seinfeld, and I don't mean like Seinfeld, I mean if you love Seinfeld as much as I do, please mention it in the comments. That show is one of those that even nowadays when I talk to people about it, they're like, of course I remember that episode, of course. Great show. I know there's a lot of people that like Friends. If you guys remember just recently, Matthew Perry, who was one of the more popular characters. He played Chandler, I think, on that show. I say I think because I didn't really watch that show that much, believe it or not. But he's kind of a case study in not being internally happy when from the outside it looks like he lives this wonderful life, right? I don't know if you guys remember, but in the early 2000s, or it might have been the late 1990s, Everybody was like, they made a big deal out of the fact that all of the cast of Friends, do you guys remember that each of them made like a million dollars an episode? It was some ungodly number, and it's like, wow, 
these guys are getting paid a million bucks an episode and each one of their parts, you know, equated to six minutes here, five minutes there, you know, something that the average person would absolutely die for. And they're sitting there getting paid, you know, a million dollars an episode. But anyway, moving forward, Chandler's no longer with us. And you know what that means? That means that probably half of those shows that he got paid a million dollars for, he probably ended up doing that for free. Hey, you didn't think I was going to go that way, did you? We have such a complaint about rich people in this world, and we forget that if you die with a ton of money in the bank, that means the last X amount of years of your life, you worked for free, you know? I heard somewhere, and you guys might have heard this too, somewhere like one out of three or one out of four African-American males dies before they ever get a chance to spend one penny of their social security check. Now, that doesn't mean you should rush to retirement at 62. You know, everybody's different, right? But I find that extremely interesting. So many of us are working and we want to retire with seven figures, which is such an awesome thing to do, such an accomplishment. But deep down, you're going to end up giving that to your kids and grandkids, you know? So one of the best things you could do, if you're a grandma or grandpa, and if you do this from here on out, I would absolutely love to hear about it. Why don't we see if we can get our kids and our grandkids into walking, right? We should really try to do that. It doesn't have to be today. Because the truth is, you're only a, you know, only on what, day nine or day 10, right? You need to get addicted yourself and then show them that, hey, grandma really loves taking her walk. Grandma really loves taking the puppy out for a walk. You want to go with us, right? Do I play grandma? Okay. Grandpa really likes going for a walk. You want to go for a walk with grandpa and the dog? Those are things that are, those are what we make memories of, you know? And then when you're out alone, your granddaughter will say, Grandpa, I really want a car. Can you give me a car? You know, and sometimes you got to tell them no. And then they'll say, but I was listening to Jesse and he says you're going to die with a million dollars in the bank. Yes. I apologize. But it's true. You know, it's true. We're all going to die with a ton of money in the bank. And it's, it's crazy. Do you realize part of the reason I have a shoe collection, and I don't know if you notice when I'm reacting to Stephanie's uh, videos, but you might notice in the back, I've got some shoes. Those are a portion of my shoes. I, uh, I have all these shoes and the reality is I don't, I don't need half of them. You know, one of these days I'm going to die and some of those shoes are going to out survive me. You know, it's not going to be for a while. I assure you, I'm going to live. I'm going to try to push uh, maybe 90. My grandmother lived to be 98 and it was just miserable. I don't, I don't know if I want to go that route. If any of you guys are dealing with problems that make it impossible for you to walk, but you are still trying to drink water and avoid sugar, I am so proud of you. There uh, have been moments in my life where I've had to recover from surgeries or I've had a, a real bad ingrown hair in certain places, you know, not to give you too much information there. Sometimes I've had blistering on my ankle. And that's why if you do wear a shoe and it rubs you the wrong way, I don't care if it's brand new and you love it and it's the cutest shoe ever, take it off. Put on the shoes that don't rub your ankles the wrong way because if your ankle starts bleeding, and you try walking through it or your, you know, your Achilles area, that is the worst. They have these band-aids. They kind of serve as second skins. They look like flesh colored plastics or something, you know? I would get I would get one of those. It's like a new skin band-aid. Get those. I also if you're thinking about getting a new pair of walking shoes, which is always fun, you know, if you're going to go shopping, Get yourself a new pair of walking shoes. You haven't done that in forever. I'm a big fan of Reebok and I'm a big fan of New Balance. But I have Nike and I have uh, Adidas and, and all the other uh, brands that you can imagine as well. 
today I'm actually uh, wearing some shoes that I wouldn't recommend necessarily. They're just little mock toe Margaritaville kind of slip-ons. Very comfortable for a 20, 30 minute walk, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend walking in some thin soled shoes like these for much longer than that, you know? What we wanna do is we wanna make it where you never have a reason not to take your walk. If you're listening for the first time, one of the things that I really preach is figure what time you have to leave the house to go to work in your car and simply start your walk about 35 minutes before that. So you can take a half hour walk around your neighborhood, then get into your car, then go to work. And if you start noticing that after a week or so of eating better, drinking water and walking, if you start to notice you have more energy, guys, let's take advantage of that. Let's move to the next level so that when you get home, you can go ahead and take another walk. Somebody asked me today, what time do you walk? I walk at seven in the morning and that'll probably be getting earlier in the day because it's getting hotter here in Arizona. And then I walk at 4.30 in the afternoon, but as it gets hotter, I might have to walk later in the evening or I might have to ditch that evening walk for a longer one in the morning. I love walking and one of the things that I always do every day, literally every day, is I walk to Fry's. And I know that might sound crazy because every one of us goes shopping once a week. Some of us go shopping in a way where they only have to go every two weeks or every four weeks. But especially if you're in the age groups I think you are, which is 35 to 55 basically, that's that's the age that watches my videos, you're probably living a home, a, alone or with your spouse, right? I, I don't think you have too many kids or grandkids around. Walk up to the store every day. And if you walk up as a team, you and your spouse, somebody can hold the milk, somebody can hold the bottle of water, somebody can hold the uh, you know, celery and tomatoes. I have a snack of baby carrots and snap peas with a little bit of ranch dressing. And when I say a little bit, it's probably about, uh, I don't know, maybe a teaspoon, but I'm eating it because half the time I can kind of ditch it, you know, but it sure does taste good, guys. It's not like it's a bad snack at all, you know? So if you really love the Doritos, which I know some of us do, myself included, if you really love the uh, potato chips with the French onion dip, oh my God. God, I love French onion dip. You do too, don't lie, with the green chives. Don't even get me started. Guys, put that away for 90 days. If you tell yourself that you're not putting it away forever, it doesn't make it so easy to cheat on your diet, right? Make it sound like, make it feel like you're going on a summer camp. You're going away to, to fat camp for three months with me. And uh, one of the reasons that I like to talk about Snickers Captain Crunch, French onion dip, is because this is not one of those diets where you say, hey, I'm gonna put the world out of sight and out of mind. If I don't have Snickers around me or chocolate milk, I'll be stronger. No, that's kind of a moment of weakness. You're gonna be walking into people's houses where they have this stuff, right? And they're gonna offer it to you. Do you want a soda while you're here, John? No, can I have a water? Take the water option, John. Don't take the soda. It's a trap. But at the same time, if it's the first time you've seen her or him and they offer you a drink, you know, you should be able to enjoy it. Just make sure you go on the two thirds rule for the rest of the evening and then go right back to three out of three rules the next day. Remember, if you're with me on day eight, nine or 10, this is not really my eighth, ninth, or 10th day walking at least. I've been doing walking for a long, long time, okay? We still haven't gotten you fully addicted to it yet. Remember, that's part of the propagandizing I'm doing on your brain. That's part of the hypnosis, right? Have you noticed at the very end of my uh, videos, I put little, I don't know if you guys noticed this or not, but I sometimes put you adore, you love walk, talk, vent. 
that's that's your brain getting hypnotized. You're wondering, why the hell do I like this ugly guy <laughs> and his goofy repetitive talks? It's because the more that I repeat water, walking, and avoiding sugar, you're eventually going to start thinking that in your sleep. You really are. So what I want you to do, do it for me. I want you to have a bowl of gnarly plain oatmeal tomorrow, if you can. Go to the store tonight. Walk there. Go get a little 12-pack of oatmeal for a buck fifty. It's really cheap. I then want you, while you're there, get a little thing of creamy Caesar or ranch. Just a thing of wishbone, creamy Caesar or ranch. Yes, it has to be wishbone. You know wishbone's the best. Then what you have to do, or Ken's. Oh my God, Ken's is pretty good salad dressing too. What you got to do is get some baby carrots, get some snap peas, get some red, yellow, and green bell peppers, right? Get some celery. And I, I can't think of any other vegetables, but if you can, get them, okay? If you go in the deli section by the meats or by the butcher section, they actually have a thing of uh, vegetables specifically for kebabs. You know, for your shish kebabs, they have the vegetables for them. Go get those, then you'll feel fancy. Dip those and just know this is not the way to lose weight. This is the way to get off of the potato chips and the Doritos, the salty, sour snack that you love. That's what I want you to do. So imagine a day tomorrow where you have water, you eat oatmeal. If you can eat oatmeal after your walk rather than before your morning walk, great. If not, you know, it is what it is. But tomorrow, if you eat oatmeal and drink water, have baby carrots and snap peas for your snack, have a blended up banana smoothie for your for your sweet snack. Sorry, I was lost for words there. And then have your regular dinner minus sodas and your regular lunch minus sodas. Then you're gonna be eating the same thing that Jesse's eating, okay? So I know that there's a piece of some of you that would like to copy what I'm doing the closest that you can. And, uh, and I think if you do, you'll note right away, Jesse's right, these carrots, and these snap peas with the with the dip, they do taste good, but I'm not really craving them today. So I think, I think I'm gonna try ditching the snack today. Hey, you know what? I haven't had a soda with my dinner all week. I've been drinking water like Jesse suggested, and I'm sleeping better. Can you believe it? Hey, since I started walking and eating oatmeal and even having a glass of Metamucil every once in a while, I'm more regular. Jesse even helps us poop. Do I have to do everything for you?